The Constitution of India is the supreme law of the land. It is we, the people of India, who by giving ourselves this constitution on the 26th of November 1949 and bringing it into effect on the 26th of January 1950, laid the cornerstone of the world's largest and most vibrant democracy. The original manuscripts of our constitution in English and Hindi were handcrafted. The exquisite calligraphy of Sri Prem Bihari Narayan Rai Zada in the English version and the intricate and stunning illuminated artworks and borders created by Sri Nandalal Bose and his students from Shanti Niketan not only made the path-breaking document a visual delight for generations to come but also ensured that the constitution provided a glimpse into the rich culture, varied heritage and illustrious past of India that is Bharat. The constitution commences with an illustration of our national emblem and the slogan Satya Meva Jayate or Truth Alone Triumphs. The national emblem has been adopted from the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka's famous lion capital at Sarnath and is a symbol of pride for every Indian. Each of the 22 parts of the constitution were illustrated and these masterpieces encompass an unimaginable period of time, subjects and artistic styles. A seal with an impressive zebu bull and a short inscription in the undeciphered script of our early ancestors from the pioneering Harappan or Indus Saraswati civilization adorns the opening page of part one, the union and its territory. Part two of the constitution which deals with citizenship is decorated with an evocative illustration of a Gurukul in a Rishi's ashram, that hallowed portal of learning whose origins can be traced back to the Vedas. Sri Ram, Devi Sita and Sri Lakshman, the eternal heroes of India who symbolize the victory of Dharma over Adharma are depicted in a scene from the Ramayana in part 3, Fundamental Rights. Sri Krishna propounding the infinite ocean of wisdom, the Bhagavad Gita to a Kim Kartavya Vimur Arjun before the commencement of the Battle of Mahabharat at Kurukshetra is the subject of the artwork in Part 4, Directive Principles of State Policy. An exquisite illustration of the enlightened Gautam Buddha delivering his trail-blazing first sermon, the Dharma Chakra Pravartan Sutra embellishes Part 5 of the Constitution dedicated to the Union. Part 6 of the constitution commences with a richly coloured piece of art of the meditating Vardhaman Mahavir, a paragon of non-violence and the last Tirthankar of our times. Ashoka's mission and his efforts to ensure that the word and the message of the Buddha travelled far and wide are depicted in an intricate piece in part 7 of the constitution. Multifarious objects including an early temple-like structure, a graceful and adorned flying yaksha and richly illustrated flora blend together in the image in part 8 which is characteristic of the style of the golden Gupta period. Artistic impressions of the magnificent and lively court of King Vikramaditya and an iconic coin issued by him adorn the first page of part 9 of our constitution. One of ancient India's most famous universities, the Nalanda Mahavihar, which was a global center of education and learning for over 800 years, is depicted in part 10. 
a moving composition in part 11 of the constitution which includes a graceful horse and other figures is a tribute to the ingenuity of the great artists of Odisha a representation of the brilliant and all pervading shiva nataraj engaged in his cosmic dance and reminiscent of the grand chol bronze sculptures adorns part 12 of our constitution the enigmatic and humongous pallav bas relief at mamalapuram which depicts either the descent of the ganga or arjun's penance is portrayed in part 13 Part 14 Services under the Union and the States commences with a scene from the court of Emperor Akbar in which imposing masterpieces of Mughal architecture serve as a backdrop The valiant and great Maratha king Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and the dauntless last guru in the Sikh tradition Guru Gobind Singh ji who established the Khalsa occupy a place of pride in part 15 which deals with elections khub ladi mardani wo to jhansi wali rani thi the indomitable rani lakshmi bai and the king of mysore tipu sultan two leaders who were instrumental in india's early freedom struggle featured in part 16 two iconic illustrations of mahatma gandhi in part 17 and part 18 of our constitution are a humble tribute to his role in india's struggle for independence the gallant netaji subhash chandra bose and his fellow patriots adorn part 19 of our constitution as a nation's homage to the great revolutionaries who powered the indian freedom movement India that is Bharat boasts of unparalleled natural heritage stunning and evocative artworks that depict the proud and majestic Himalayas and the silent and vast deserts are showcased in parts 20 and 21 of our constitution respectively the boats depicted in part 22 of our constitution not only remind us of the unending oceans that make hindustan sare jahan se acha but also symbolize the eternal quest of we the people to sail beyond the limitations of the ordinary the 22 pieces of art that embellish our constitution are by very definition not exhaustive in nature but when woven together in this document of unparalleled importance they bring to life a captivating portrait of the diverse culture and timeless civilization of india that is bharat jaya hind